Congress has questions for Hunter's lawyers. We know that they have access to some very important people that they would otherwise not have access to. Hunter is Joe Biden's son, and so most defendants don't get to pick up the phone call and start ringing people at the Department of Justice for upper echelon meetings. But that's exactly what Hunter's lawyers did, and they may have turned around and leaked some of the insight from those meetings to the media. And now Comer and Jason Smith and Jim Jordan all want to know more about it. Matt Gates says there's enough evidence here about obstruction and other criminality to support impeachment. But this is the letter that came over from Congress. Three people that we know well here, Jim Jordan, Jason Smith, and James Comer, all sending this letter directly to Hunter Biden's lawyers. And here is those two attorneys. We've got Christopher Clark, the same guy who was there on the plea deal when it was botched, the same guy arguing for Hunter for years now. He's withdrawn from the case. The case has now landed with Abe Lowell, who we've heard from here several times. And this is from Congress of the United States. September 6th is when this thing was sent over and Congress says, hey, Hunter's lawyers, the Committee on Judiciary, Ways and Means and Oversight, three congressional committees, are continuing our oversight of the DOJ's commitment to impartial justice. Yeah, right. And it's handling of a criminal investigation involving Hunty. On July 26th, Hunter appeared before Judge Norica, shout out to Judge Norica, in District of Delaware for a hearing on an apparently unprecedented plea deal by the DOJ's own admissions on that one, involving Hunter Biden, agreed to by the DOJ's office for Delaware. However, Congress says, the plea deal fell apart when prosecutors and defense attorneys could not provide answers to very routine questions posed by the judge. A little over three weeks later, Hunter's lawyers, on August 19th, after this happened, the New York Times and Politico, they published separate articles providing detailed accounts of failed settlement negotiations between the department and Hunter's lawyers based on non-public information, including previously undisclosed documents and communications. And if you want to read them, here's the citations. The information contained in these articles, says Congress, reinforces serious concerns about whether the department has handled the case involving the president's son impartially and above board. There are a limited number of people who would have had access to the documents and the communications discussed in these articles. And based on the narrative set forth in these pieces, the committees believe it is highly likely that these materials were provided to these media outlets by or at the direction of the Biden legal defense team. And guess what? That's you. Given that these disclosures have been made to two media outlets, Hunter's lawyers leaked it to two media outlets, according to them, and that this information has already been widely publicized, no basis exists to withhold these documents and these communications. You've already disclosed them, including on the basis of any purported duty of confidentiality, work product, or other privilege. So don't try to assert that you can withhold this stuff from us previously. They cite a DC circuit case. Here is what they want. So accordingly, so that the oversight committee, the ways and means committee, and the judiciary committee can fulfill our oversight obligations. Please produce the following Hunter's lawyers. Well, they want to see a 32 page letter from Mr. Clark Hunter's lawyers to David Weiss. That was referenced in the Politico article. 32 page, we call these deviation requests or something similar in criminal law. It is a negotiation letter, 32 page letter to David Weiss. This is why my client is innocent. This is why there'll be big problems for you if you don't do this thing. So Congress wants to see a copy of it. They also said, and we read this here, that there was a 100 slide PowerPoint presentation that they also use. And I said, shout out to the PowerPoints. I mean, gosh, we love our slides and mind maps here. You know that. All emails from Mr. Clark they want copies of from Hunter's lawyers to the head of all these different divisions, legal counsel, office of legal counsel, tax, office of the solicitor general, Lisa Monaco, Merrick Garland, Jen General Bradley Weisenheimer, all seeking meetings. They're all listed in these articles, so give us the info about them. The May 11th email is also referenced. That's from Deputy Attorney General Bradley Weinsheimer talking to Mr. Clark. And so Hunter just went up the chain of command, right? He wanted to really get to Merrick Garland, but his lawyers were talking to everybody. And Deputy Attorney General Bradley was one of them. And again, you know, most people don't get this privilege. You say, I want to talk to the top prosecutor in the country. They get the heck out of here. What are you, nuts? But Hunter's lawyers get that because of who his daddy is. The May 18th communication between an attorney for Hunter and two prosecutors for Delaware, including the first draft of the proposed deal. Give us that copy. We also want, yes, this is what we all want. The communication between Leslie Wolf from the DOJ and Hunter's lawyers that included a list of must-haves for a potential deal. What must be included? Leslie Wolf was the same woman who allegedly tipped off the Hunter team about the investigation of the storage facility. Congress also wants the May 19th 
communication between Leslie Wolf and Hunter's attorneys, where Wolf points to another deal with another camera company that's also referenced in the article. Communications between Hunter's attorneys in Delaware and a draft of the diversion agreement. There was a June 2nd email from Ms. Clark to Le Mr. Clark to Leslie that included a sample immunity provision. We want to see what that says. A post June 2nd email between Hunter's attorneys and prosecutors where the deal was line edited that are referenced in the article. Another email to Leslie Wolf with a final immunity provision. Emails from Weiss's top deputy to the press. Politico referenced that. Look at all this stuff. An email from Hunter's lawyers about a press release that they were going to release. A June 19th email from this woman, Shannon Hansen, U.S. Attorney's Office. She was asking to remove two words from the statement describing the status of the investigation. It's incredible. So U.S. prosecutors are working with the defense on press release statements that go to the New York Times. So-called prosecutors are colluding with defense attorneys so that the media is properly apprised. The pretrial diversion report sent on July 24th from the probation officer. They want that communication from the U.S. attorneys prosecutors to Hunter Biden's lawyers about the plea deal. Another August 7th letter suggesting changes and all documents that are not listed here. Any conversations between Biden's defense team and the lawyers. And, I'm, you know, they're not going to get all this stuff like there's like they're not going to get most almost any of this. I don't think they're going to respond. They're uh, attorney client privilege. We didn't leak anything. Have a nice day. Please provide this no later than 5 p.m. on September 20th. My brother Joey's birthday. Shout out to Joey. Pursuant to rule 10 of the rules of House of Representatives, we have the opportunity to investigate this at any time. And if you refuse and if you claim privilege, which is exactly what they're going to do, we may need to seek testimony from you about this disclosure since you don't have privilege since you've already published it. Sincerely, your friends, Jim Jordan, James Comer, and Jason Smith. That is the letter from Congress over to the United States. I'm sorry, over to Hunter's lawyers. And we've got James Comer and Jim Jordan here who are commenting on this, telling us what this means. And let's hear what they have to say about it. Uh, my experience covered, absolutely. That's what it looks like and that's what happened. And we have instance after instance throughout this whole investigation to where we've uncovered more information about where the IRS investigation into Hunter Biden, which as we've heard from the IRS whistleblowers was leading directly to Joe Biden was obstructed. And I can tell you from my experience over the past nine months leading this investigation of Biden's, all the influence peddling schemes, that we've been obstructed at every turn, not only by the Biden attorneys, but also by the Department of Justice, by Homeland Security now. We've been obstructed by the media. We've been obstructed by Democrats on the House Oversight Committee, the FBI, and the list goes on and on. But we're still able to produce evidence, new evidence every week that no one knew beforehand. And I believe all this evidence that we've gathered, we're finally starting to piece it together and put together a timeline. And what we're finding is very concerning about the current president of the United States. Let me let me get to you, Jim Jordan. Can you explain that? And, and this gets to the heart of your investigation in, in the Judiciary Committee, and that is whether or not the FBI and DOJ are politicized and whether they're weaponized. That sounds an awful like a lot yeah. like to me, the DOJ is weaponized and they're using the FBI and now even Secret Service. Yeah, the same U.S. attorney who tipped off the Secret Service, the same U.S. attorney's office who talked to Gary Shapler's uh, lawyer is the same U.S. attorney's office who designed the sweetheart deal that was declined by the judge. That's the same guy that Merrick Garland made the special counsel. So of course the fix is in. The White House is getting all ready because they know what's likely to happen later this month. The speaker's been clear about this. If we need to go to an impeachment inquiry phase of our oversight work, we will do that. They're getting ready, but we're going to come at this from all angles. Mr. Comer today subpoenaed documents and individuals from DHS and the Secret Service. Chairman Smith has subpoenaed individuals from the IRS who were part of the investigation into Hunter Biden. We have subpoenaed individuals from the FBI who were part of the investigation. We want them in for depositions. So we're coming at this from three sides to get the facts for the country so we know whether we need to go to impeachment inquiry. But it is looking like more and more every day we need to go to that phase of our oversight work. Where do you see this going, Jim Jordan? I mean, the obstruction has been in plain sight. The 1023 form, well, we now know why they didn't want to hand that over. That earlier before that, it was the suspicious activity reports. Now it's, you know, now we can't get the 5,400 emails under pseudonyms because the National Archives and Records 
American Association, uh, yeah. you know, NARA is not handing over the information. Uh, is anybody going to cooperate? What is the rightful role of Congress called oversight of government? Well, this is where the impeachment inquiry phase of investigation, I think, becomes important. And Speaker McCarthy has talked about this. Once you actually pass a resolution that says we're in that phase of oversight uh, work, our constitutional duty, then the courts have been much more willing when you have to go to court to get the information that Mr. Comer talked about we're trying to get. The courts have been much more willing to say, hey, this is a constitutional duty of the House, the House of Representatives, if in fact they're doing impeachment, you need to provide those documents and those individuals for the depositions that they ask for. So that's why that is significant. And again, I think the evidence is pointing us clearly in that direction. We'll get back, we'll discuss it as a conference and see if we have that resolution vote and we move forward as the speaker has indicated. This is overwhelming. And the fact that the White House announced today they're creating a war room as opposed to cooperating with our investigation. If Joe Biden's completely innocent, if he's running the most transparent administration in history, like he said, if he's been completely honest with the American people about his knowledge and involvement in his family's shady business schemes, then why won't they just comply with our request? We haven't requested anything that I think anyone would say is out of the ordinary. This is a credible investigation. Uh, everything that we have made public is new information that no one knew before. We've caught Joe Biden in countless lies about his knowledge and involvement in his family's shady business schemes. And this, I think, Sean, even members of the moderate wing of our party are realizing this could potentially be the biggest political scandal in my adult lifetime. We have a president who has evidence that his family's taken over $20 million from foreign nationals. We have sworn testimony and emails that show that the president was doing favors in exchange for this money his family is receiving. This is very serious. We need to get all the facts. We've been producing evidence. We're at some roadblocks now with this administration. This impeachment inquiry will help us get all yeah. the evidence so the American people can know once and for all exactly yep. what Joe Biden did and when he did it. It does feel like it's a bit of a slow process, no doubt about it, but we do, you know, as the weeks go by, we get new pieces of evidence that they can latch onto that will open up the Pandora's box for them, slowly chip away the facade that they try to sell to all of us. You know, now we know we've got emails. Just recently we learned we've got pseudonyms from the pseudonyms. We got the emails from the pseudonyms and the emails. We got now a bank account record from now Hunter apparently getting $100,000 from Joe from a Wells Fargo account. Advisors are in there. So we got a pseudonym to emails to a transfer. Now that's going to lead to bank accounts. Who knows where it goes from there? So slowly but surely, the tortoise and the hare, they just keep moving on down the road towards victory. And Matt Gates though, says, you know, that enough of this already, okay? We've got plenty here to actually lead to an impeachment and it's time to get started. Here's what he says. 91 charges against President Trump. Meanwhile, you've got a pile of evidence against Joe Biden, strong enough to convict OJ Simpson in South Central Los Angeles. And yet we're sort of tepidly talking about maybe beginning an inquiry. We have bank records, we have flight logs, we have changes in administration policy. If we aren't willing to impeach Joe Biden with the evidence we have, why are we even looking? So the the question is whether or not Republicans will yeah. have sufficient spine to do what is necessary. I also think that we've got this real converging crisis on government funding right now, Greg. And you know, the way to go after the deep state, the way to stop this stuff is to cut the money off. I'm very disappointed we don't have the 12 individual appropriations bills that we demanded in January, and we're probably going to have to do something about that. All right. So it's a great point from Matt Gates. What is all this for if they're not going to do something about it? Maybe they will. It may just come at a later time. And as we've talked about, might be good to time this right next to the trials. If they're going to be trying Trump in front of juries all next year, 2024, maybe it's good to have a couple different Hunter investigations and Joe Biden investigations and impeachment proceedings going on to counterbalance that because this is the new politics. The left started it. Here we are.